brought you a story earlier about a father who tied up his teenage daughter who had been doing drugs in an attempt, he says, to take her to rehab. The father, who is now in police custody, could face felony charges of attempted kidnapping. So here now to talk more about the case is criminal defense attorney and KUSI contributor Vic Bajaj. Good to see you, Vic. Likewise. Thank you so uh, much. So it's interesting because the father and, and this girl's sister seems like they wanted to help this girl who, who who admittedly was using methamphetamine for about a year, but they bound her, they gag her, they throw in the car, and they want to take her to Mexico to try to take her into rehab. So is this kidnapping? What is the, what is your thought on this? Well, if this is a law school exam, you would say yes. Mm -hmm. Throw the book at them. This is involuntary asportation. Asportation is simply the movement of an individual. And I can, for instance, Logan, I can grab you, I can move you one foot, and if you say, I didn't want Mr. Bajaj to do that, technically that's a kidnapping, mm -hmm. even a momentary movement or an asportation. So if we look at it sort of as a law school fact pattern, as sometimes we do, we say to ourselves, yes, they're guilty of the crimes. Now, not only the father, but the young lady's sister as well who was in the car. Yeah. Now, these cases are very interesting because what they are is a reflection, in my opinion, of the consistent decriminalization of serious hard narcotics. Mm -hmm. One can say, as you did in your introductory comments, this young lady had been using methamphetamine for a year. Well, you don't just use methamphetamine for a year. If you have a year of use of methamphetamine or any extraordinarily hard synthetic drug, you are in a debilitated, addicted state of your mind and your life. And I can tell you, I have represented the whole spectrum of narcotics-influenced activities, uh, from marijuana, heroin, oxycodone, oxycontin, all the opiates you can imagine, methamphetamine and cocaine, etc. There is a very unique position that methamphetamine has. You will see periodically and statistically that the types of crimes and actions people commit while under the influence of methamphetamine are truly like no other. So at a certain point, we have to understand that the decriminalization, meaning if you're caught being under the influence or with a personal possession amount, you want to know what our law enforcement officers are bound to do by the state law that changed a few years ago? Yeah. Well, Logan, they just write a citation and say, well, I hope you have some good luck in court. Go to a few classes and check with us if you have any more sure. problems. So what can parents do? They love their children. The children are maybe under drugs or, or some other reason and they want to help out, what can they do short of throwing them in the car and taking them to rehab? Well, it's a very interesting conflict because at a certain point, parents, you know, we can understand and sort of sympathize. If you have one of your loved ones who is in a debilitatingly addicted fashion of their life where the drugs are carrying their actions, not their own minds or their bodies or their souls, it's the drugs that are dictating horrible actions. Frankly, there is no other way to do it than to somehow either psychologically or to physically push someone into a rehab facility. But what are the odds of an individual who's been using methamphetamine for over a year or a year actually staying in a voluntary rehabilitation program? Yeah. It's less than 2%. If they want to leave, then they're allowed to leave, right? The, the, the facility can't hold a 17-year-old in the facility, much like uh, uh, anybody can tie them up and take them there. Right, and the answer to that would be, and the question rhetorically is, why can't they, Logan? And the reason why they false can't imprisonment. is... False imprisonment. False imprisonment and kidnapping. Yeah. So at the same time that we have the meeting of the elements for the crimes, you can bet your bottom dollar that our district attorney, Summer Stephan, very fair lady and a very good leader in the DA's office throughout California, she's going to have a hot potato and she's going to have to execute an extraordinary amount of prosecutorial discretion. Let me also back up chronologically and let me tell you the law enforcement officers in this case, I believe, did the right thing. They did not arrest the individuals. They put it off for further investigation. It's hard not to sympathize with our with the parents of the world who see their their offspring going into a whole different area that they could have never imagined their son or daughter entering into. So, so, so what would the prosecutor say? Let's say the prosecutor looks at it and they think to themselves, I don't really want to press charges. What would be the rationale for that? Yes, it was kidnapping, but it was done for maybe a good reason, albeit 
not appropriate, but it looks like you love your daughter and don't do that again kind of a thing? Well, you know, prosecutorial discretion is exercised every day a thousand times throughout our yeah. fine state. Okay, and what this means is we may have a lot of offenses that at first blush meet every element. But of course, you look into the past criminality of the suspect or suspects. You look into a history of abuse or coercion. If those things aren't present, the real focus of a district attorney and, and our police department is to make sure everyone is safe. Once we understand that everyone is safe, then the prosecutors are allowed, and in many instances we expect them to exercise extraordinary discretion. It's really what differentiates one prosecutor from a next prosecutorial sure. agency. Vic Bajaj. Thanks, Vic. Good to see you as always. My pleasure. Thank right. you so much. Appreciate it.